folks, welcome to another edition here of France's Corner, little Dolphins roundtable for you. And the usual suspects are back here as they are weekly. And by the way, before I introduce everybody, thank you for supporting the Dolphins roundtable each week. We get a lot of good uh, comments on there each week. Um, and Mike will answer them back too. Mike will uh, will get back at you also uh, if need be at that point. So will Doug and Sarney too. I try to leave Sarney at the last minute, but that's it. But Jason Sarney <laughs> is here with us. Doug Lee Durung is here with us. Michael Leva is here with us from dolphinstalk.com. Gentlemen, I'm going to start with this because it's so funny. This kind of goes back to like five or six podcasts ago when we said there was nothing going on. It was like five minutes after Mike that Odell Beckham made the uh, yeah. the appearance of Dolphins, you know, the Dolphins facility. We all laughed at it. We'll have to talk about it next week. But it's done. It's signed, sealed, and delivered as of today. Uh, this will post, obviously, Thursday morning. We're doing this Wednesday night. Um, Doug, I'll start with you here. Odell Beckham, now the third wide receiver for the Miami Dolphins. Your thoughts when you saw that kind of kind of happening and now official. I like it. I like the move a lot. I like it, especially because it's $3 million with incentive to get up to eight and a half. Um, he just fits. And a lot of people are, you know, kind of worried about the fact that they think he's still a locker room drama. If that was the case, he wouldn't have been brought in, nor would the Dolphin teammates have contacted him to sign with the Dolphins. Also, they're worried he's going to get mad if he doesn't hit that incentive bonus or doesn't get the the snaps or anything. The reason he chose Miami over Buffalo, over Kansas City, over these other teams is because he sat down with Mike McDaniel and he told him, listen, this is what I'm going to do with you. This is why I'm going to open up your game. And do you want to come here? And he chose to take less to come here because he got Tyree Kill, Jalen Waddle, Johnu Smith. He knows for a fact I'm getting open. And if you look at the film with the Ravens, there was a ton of times, and this isn't a knock on Lamar, there's a ton of times he was open and he never got the ball. So it's just the, it, it just adds more dynamic speed, uh, route running, and that veteranness to a position where the Dolphins lacked last year. You know, Hill got hurt, Waddle got hurt. The next guys that stood st- stepped up wasn't great, and uh, we needed that. Especially, you know, people clamor that Tua needs to get to his second and third reads because you know every quarterback gets to him constantly. Um, sarcasm but um <laughs> yeah i uh i love the move and you know i i preferred him over boyd so i like that they actually brought in opj and we got a vet at that third wide receiver we've been talking about mike what do you think yeah, he checks every box of what they needed they need someone to be a legit third option in the passing game because you know chase claypool is not here thank god and on the same day we <laughs> signed him chase claypool signs with the bills who won that day come right. on i don't care if you're a dolphins <laughs> fan who hates Odell Beckham and and you know were and are against him signing here. That's they still won that day. Um, River Craycraft, just you know, nice guy. I'm sure just didn't make any plays. Same thing with Robbie Chosen, Chosen Anderson, whatever name he's going by this week. Look, those guys didn't do anything when their number when they were asked to just do a little bit more. Odell in this role to be that third wide receiver and also you know. Give guys like Hill a breather, because I think this year we're not going to see a Tyreek Hill-centric offense where he's going to be force-fed the ball as much. He's still going to get fed the ball, just not as much. You know, Odell, put him out there to make plays. And for the fans out there who don't like this, I really don't understand the thought process behind it. Because trust me, if this was something to sort of rip the team for, or say, what are they thinking, what are they doing, I'd be the first one to do it. I honestly would. But this isn't one of those times. He's making three million bucks for crying out loud. He can't. I mean, wh- you know, we know it's not 2015, 2016 Odell. We know that. Guess what? So does the team, and so does Odell. Hence, three million dollars with incentives. So, and if he reaches the incentives, it means two things: one, he's making a lot of plays, and two, if he's making a lot of plays, it probably means the team is probably winning a lot of games. Right. So, I want him to reach every incentive that's out there, and that's only a positive thing. But he has big game experience. He's played in cold weather before in his career, so that's not going to be an issue for him. He, you know, and the whole thing of, you know, he's a locker room cancer, he's drama queen. Give me an example. Okay. I understand with the Giants, he took the team on a boat right before a playoff game. That was like 10 years ago. Okay. At some point, you got to move on from things. Kind of what I said in the draft when they're like, oh my God, this guy's just like Charles Harris. Like, move on. It was 10 years ago. You got to move on from some things. Same thing with this. And yes, he didn't get along with Mayfield and Cleveland. Not the first wide receiver, not to get along with a quarterback. Outside of that, Where's all this drama, locker room cancer stuff? He was fine with the Rams, and he was fine with the Ravens. I don't care what he did 10 years ago. What's he done uh, of late? You know, people do change. People do evolve. People do grow. So I'll give him the benefit of the doubt there. This is a home run signing. I think one of their better signings this offseason, which I haven't been in love with a lot of them, honestly. This is probably one of the best 
two or three signings they've had this off season. So right. two thumbs up for me. Yep, I, I agree with you on that one there. Sarney, finish us off. The guy said it really well. This is a home run signing, and it's money at $3 million. Of course, if it gets to the 8.5 with the incentives, that's fantastic. That money can go to next year's salary cap. Look, they needed a third, a viable third option at wide receiver. I'm going to say a stat right now about a guy that I love. It's not an insult about him, but this exactly explains why they needed a third option. The third-ranked offense pass catcher, targeted guy, yard producer, and first down creation. Overall, the third guy after Tyreek Hill and Jalen Waddell, Durham Smythe. So when a seldom used tight end is your third targeted per game, your third receiving yard producer per game, and your third highest first down creator, you need someone more viable. And this is not a slight on Braxton Berrios or River Craig Craft or Eric Ezukanma, but there's a reason why Odell Beckham Jr. is now your surefire number three. Last year with the Ravens, highest yards per reception average. In his career, 16.1. His career average, 14.0. So you're getting 2.1 plus Odell on his average of his career. I don't care if he's making 36 catches. I say that number specifically because he made 35 catches last year. That would put him number three overall for the Dolphins. It was last year, 33 of them will be spectacular. 20 of them will probably be first down catches. Five of them will probably be touchdowns. And I think that number is going to be higher. Give me 14, 15 games at the very least. I'm playoffs, and then we're good. I like it. I, I also like the signing a lot because you're not giving it. When we first talked about it, I think we were talking a lot more money. I thought we, were, I thought we were thinking maybe in that eight to ten million base, you know, just to, you know, because that's where he's going to probably get maybe on the market. I heard the number, and I was first. I was happy with the signing. Second, I was out. I I couldn't have been happier when I saw incentive base and I saw the low base because you know what? At this point, make him work for it. You know what? And and like Sarney said. If he gets to that point, this offense obviously had a really good season. If our third wide receiver is getting those yards, is getting touchdowns, is getting all those incentives, that would be really fun for this offense. And why not give another weapon to two if you could afford to put it in there at this point as well? If the whole thing is going to be about Mike McDaniel and this offense, and this is what they're going to have to base the season off, you know, make sure that offense is a lead again or right up there, add more pieces. They just drafted a running back. You got Odell Beckham. Yeah, of course, I know that probably – the four of us will probably be screaming this from the mountaintop. I'd love another tight end to come in here. You know, Johnny Smith was nice, but I'd love another guy. But at this point, I'm happy with what they did there. And sorry, I'm going to go back to you here and start with you here. That wide receiver room now for the Miami Dolphins, one through three. I don't want to count four, five, and six and all the way down there, but top three. Is that the best top three in the league, wide receiver-wise, in your mind? Is there another one better uh, that you could name? If not, I would go with the Dolphins at that point, too. But what do you think? I would have said Cincinnati, but they lost the third. They're with a duo now still. Uh, I would probably have to say a new team came into contention with Stephon Diggs, Nico Collins, Tank Dell. I mean, how can I not say them now? Because those two were playoff receivers for CJ Stroud, and now they got arguably one of the best in Diggs, so they have to be in the equation. Um, But for my money, I am going to go into this season as, yes, as advertised. These should be. The best trio. I'm calling it Miami Thrice. I like it. I like you better coin that and put on a t shirt before someone else does, right? Time coded. My dad told me that's called a poor man's patent. So if anybody wants to go, I'm time coded. (laughs) We're going to cut the tape and let's already have that. He's going to put it all over the place. Uh, Mike, Mike, I'll go to you here. What do you think? Poor man's patent. I'm totally going to steal that. That's awesome. (laughs) Um, Yeah, I got to write that down. (laughs) Yeah. um, Two, me. I'd say it's probably yes. The Eagles are in the mix. The problem is yep. the third wide receiver is Devontae Parker. So <laughs> I'm just qualifying them right there. They're out. Um, Houston's in the conversation. Yep. I got two other teams that are in the conversation. One of them is probably a little step down from Miami. That is Seattle with Metcalf, Lockett, and Jackson Smith. I can't say the kid's last name. That, right. that guy. Uh, and the one who I think might be equal or even slightly better than Miami is San Francisco with uh, mm. Uke Samuel and, and um, Juwan Jennings, but Miami, look, they're in the conversation. If they're right. not one, they're probably two. I would say San Francisco's probably the only team that can make a case. Like one, two, three is probably better right now as of today. But yeah, they're in the, I mean, they're right up there. If they're not one, like I said, they're probably two. So would San Francisco be one with a bullet if I put Kittle at the third spot? Yeah. 
if you put Kittle as like right. a pass catcher, right? Like a, a pass know, catcher. if a team does have two really good wide receivers and a very good tight end, yeah, uh, they'd you know, like pass like them. if Kansas City, if you wanted to put Kansas City in the mix uh, yeah, and have Kelsey right as a three, yeah. I, I would say that's okay. But obviously, we're talking strictly about. And wide I know receivers. San Francisco might actually trade their third wide receiver there, Jennings, so he might be on the move. I guess still even. Right. I know there was some chatter about that, but, but not yet. So he's there. But yes, the tight end would have to count. So I'm thinking of any right. teams with top tight ends. Um, not Kelsey, not San Francisco again hits it there. So yeah, right. I mean, I'd probably say if Miami's not one or two. So okay. I mean, really, it's, they're up yeah. there, right there with you at that point. Dougley, finish us off here. Yeah, definitely top three. Um, but like we we're all talking, there are some teams that do have like even Chicago. Chicago has a really Sticky nice good. Right. Yes. Room right with Keenan Allen right and more, call. and then they put you know they pick up the the rookie. Um, but yeah, definitely if we don't put them at one, like if we try not to be biased and right. we don't put right. them at one, it's they're definitely top three and just wide receivers. Cause you know, if you add in the pass catching tight end, you kind of have to give a case for Johnu Smith, who is dangerous at that right. tight end position. Like when we first signed him, everyone was like, Oh, you know, we could have got Aiden Hurst or we could have picked the bigger name, but like the more you watch Johnu Smith, he's gonna be like I, I I predict he's gonna have like eight end arounds this year. Like he's gonna be ridiculous for us. I can't wait to see John Smith oh, in this. Oh, I got a team we all forgot. I got a team we all forgot. Tell me the Tennessee the Tennessee Titans. Oh, Ridley good call. Hopkins right. Boyd. Right. Ridley Hopkins Boyd is pretty damn good. That's right. that's a pretty good top three right there. They got Levi's jeans throwing on the ball, so we'll see what happens there. <laughs> don't, but, cr- yeah. don't crap yeah. out if you bet on them. <laughs> right, right. Gonna, unless they're playing the Dolphins. Right. Right. And our defense wants to play prevent. I'm well, ducking. You know, Calvin Ridley right. cats in uh, the Hard Rock, so I don't want to, you know. Right. As long as he walks into the Hard Rock, they only have two receivers on that team anyway. Put an so app in front there. of them. All right, that's good. Yeah, it's a, it's a it's a fun conversation. I'd like to be in the fun conversation mode with the Dolphins. We're talking about them having such a good now three or whatever the case may be, because for years you didn't even have it. You were you're searching for a one, nevertheless mm-hmm. a, a one, two, and three, and now. Odell is the third one. That's it's just incredible to even think about as a Dolphins fan or somebody ready to watch this Dolphins team uh, come about. All right, two more uh, big big questions, and we're going to get out of here for the roundtable today. Uh, one thing that was brought up a couple of weeks ago, we haven't talked about something that I think should have happened, and I've been talking about it for, I mean, two decades on the radio. The fact that the Super Bowl is on a Sunday night, everyone goes to work on that Monday, and if they push it back a little bit, they can have President's Day weekend, have that Monday off, have that game. I mean, you're going to start it at 6 no matter what, 6.20, whatever the case, the kickoff's going to be. You're not going to start it now later because you have that Monday off. 6 is perfect for that. But 18-game season, Joe Burrow commented on it. If you do that, you got to have two bye weeks. I think Sarney said that or Douglas said that uh, a couple weeks back when we talked about it a little bit. What do you guys think about the change if they do make that? Make it an 18-game season. Give the two bye weeks. Get that Super Bowl during President's Day weekend. Have that Monday off uh, as a national holiday, if you want to call it at that point. Uh, Doug, I'll start here with you. What do you think about that, if that does make a change? Obviously, for fans more than anyone else. Yeah, I was talking about that uh, with Steven um, on our podcast, me, myself, and this guy, on the Dol- Dolphins Talk Network. Yeah, look at that oh, plug, Doug. Oh, I love it. Wow. Look at that part of the family. Well done, Doug. Doug, we go um, wrong. And uh, yeah, it, it it just it made sense because right. so many times, like obviously, you you going out or you going to someone's house for the Super Bowl, you're not going to be sipping on you know ginger ales. I will because I don't drink, but you're you want to have fun, be out till like two o'clock, celebrate your win or your loss, um, and then you want the next day off. And it always just it was just one weekend back, like it was just it just made so much sense. And yeah, they need to two bye weeks. I would even push back the trade deadline, and then you got to expand the roster. Like right. it, they have to accommodate these guys a little bit more because we're already starting to see them slowly take away the preseason because it's kind of redundant. Like it's not really needed. You need some type of games, right. but you don't need three or four. Um, I'm not against it. Hey man, you know we got a ton of baseball, a ton of basketball. I would love more football. You know that's that's our that's our sport. But you know the players' health is more important. So yeah, you gotta have two buys and extend, extend the roster, and then you know work around that. Right. If you, if you add a couple more roster spots, or like what they did with the practice squad, let you get three more guys, maybe four guys on the practice squad that you can bring up, bring down whatever it is, veteran guys. I don't think it would hurt at that point. What do you think, Mike? Yeah, the fascinating thing about this, which I think a lot of fans maybe might not even know, is this is not part of the CBA. The NFL could announce this tomorrow if they wanted to. 
and there's nothing the players can do about it. Right. This is not part of the CBA. The NFL has 100% power. Now, they don't want to start a war with the players either, so they're going to talk to them and stuff. But at the end of the day, they can make this call. Just like when they added that one more game to go to Week 17, all the players, oh, okay, sorry, bye. They don't care what you think, right. essentially. So um, it will happen. It's just a matter of when, not if. It, it is happening because there's too much money on the table. And, yeah, they might add a second week off there for each – um, have a second week off the air, you know, and they might expand the rosters. Expand. I'm sure they'll make all those concessions, but adding an extra week means more international games too. That's where they, that's Correct. where they're really going to cash in. Mm-hmm. And now where they, where the NFL pretty much said we're playing every year on Christmas. We don't give a crap what day it falls on. There's that too, and they're already talking about selling that package to Netflix, which get another TV provider involved would get full. We'll, will pay me but more money which is more money in the pot more money for the players and way more money for the owners it's happening it's um when not if i think it's going to be soon and with the preseason i do think they'll keep one preseason game just because but remember college football has no preseason and nobody right. that's an eye so right. i don't even think if they went to no preseason games i wouldn't be shocked either but the nfl is about making money and roger goodell you know all the fans had the draft love to boom and that's fine but the reason they love this sport so much is because of that guy. Mm-hmm. At the end of the day, it, it's like going to a pro wrestling show and I boo this guy. You're booing him, but you know it's all part of the show. <laughs> no right. one should be really booing Roger Goodell. He's the reason you have this sport how it is now, which is almost too big to fail. And yeah. it's so good in so many ways. And I love that the Christmas Day thing, because that's pretty much the NFL's middle finger to the NBA. Like, we don't mm-hmm. care that mm-hmm. you have this day and now the christmas day thing if they move well that's that if they move back to super bowl one week to that one weekend that's the nba all-star game that's weekend. Right. You go to the NBA, yeah you're gonna have to go move your whole nba all-star game we don't care <laughs> crap about that. that that is their proverbial middle finger to the nba which i'm not a big nba fan i just the me sport neither. just kind of turns me off in a lot of ways um i love it so go for it but it will happen it is happening i don't know what year but it's gonna happen all right, not if, but when. Right, I'm with you on that one yep. as well. Sardi, what do you think? Uh, turning down more football is like turning down a free trip to Vegas. You don't do it. You accept <laughs> it and say, where are we going? What are we doing? You know, so with that said, you know, Mike's right about the international games. The NFL could say, we're going to give every single team a international game. You'll have a bye week after. So that could right. be great. So, you know, I'm just spitballing here, but the options are awesome to have two bye weeks. Wouldn't it be great to have bye week one in weeks one through nine, bye weeks two, ten through nineteen. So you're getting these bodies right. You know what I mean? Imagine having an international game that after the math you're having 14 days off essentially. And then you get another week off later in the year before the playoffs. Right. Add more players. Uh definitely add more protected players on the practice squad. Give these I'll tell you one more that I would love. Two more things. Give me an eighth round again. Throw okay. another round in the draft. Wow. Because if you're going to get this, the best way to get more players happy under the CBA, draft more. Mm-hmm. Well, draft I've more. heard that they don't want that, the players, because they have felt when the draft used to be eight rounds, 10 rounds, 12 rounds, right. that after a certain round, they the player freedom. wants to have some control to go where they want I guess instead it. of being drafted someplace. So I, I don't think the players would want that. Very true. Good point there. But I will tell you this. I mean, it's probably a little intangible. You throw a number of players that get undrafted into a room and say, you know what? If things are different, would you love to have gotten an eight call and still been to where you were? I think that could be a tiny little component. I'm not married to it. But the thing that I would love, you know, and I think is the major reason what makes this thing so great is because it eliminates what we've had for two years. You get eight road games, eight home games, vice versa. You got to eliminate that. This is not, you, you need a fair playing field, especially for season tickets. Holders, if you're taking uh, an international game away from an eight home game team, you're really sticking it to the season ticket holders, especially those who travel but can't travel international or don't want it, you know. Right. So, nine and nine, 18 games, ninth, uh, 20 weeks, whatever, however you do it, whatever you do it, I think it's, it's time. I miss the old seasons of going eight and eight. Yeah, I miss those seasons, right? I mean, not as adults. Nine and nine. Right. See, we, need, now, now we, need be right. we need the it's called inflation. Of we don't have the option of right. mediocrity anymore. You don't, want to be, you don't want to be eight and nine, or you don't want to be nine and eight. It just sounds weird. But if you're nine and nine, you know, eh, 500. Right, 500. 500. Right. You want to be, there's got to be some sort of Mendoza that's line. Cool, right. Right. right, that's it. I honestly think that this should have been done years ago, and it doesn't mean even adding the weeks. Uh, whatever, even if they started the season two weeks later, years ago, before they added extra games and stuff, just because it's right there. It's not like you're you're moving, you know, the season a month 
to get to that point so you can have that extra week. Yeah, but they also extra... said, too, they might start the season back on Labor Day weekend, which they used right. to do all the time Right. Mm. for people who are old enough to remember. They used to do it all the time. Right. Then they got off Labor Day weekends. People are traveling. People want to go to games. The hell with it. Labor Day weekend is like most people have a long – well, almost everyone has a long weekend. That's right. the, that's when they should start the season. Then sneak in your second bye. Then sneak in your extra game, and then you get to that week. They got to start it one week earlier, actually. Um, and that's what the, – I would do that. I think Labor Day weekend, it would screw with everyone's fantasy drafts in some way, but get over it. Um, it would be awesome. And you know, the next Christmas, one more thing about Christmas thing, you know, yeah. in the NBA, yes, there definitely is that kind of – because the NBA's got five games on Christmas, you know. That was my first job out of college, and one of my first obscure jobs that I had to do was literally me and my buddy, my partner in the broadcast room, had a pack for the Christmas workers – and all five games in all arenas, the security, the the, the, the broadcasters, gift bag to say thank you, like, like lotions, moisturizers, hair creams. Like I literally packed a thousand in Kenneth Cole bags to say thank you. It was like one of the one of the craft jobs. But sports is holiday. Sports is weekend. Sports is time when people are home with each other to say, hey, you see that? So more holiday, more holiday. It's just part of the parcel. Douglas, if, got to they're go. gonna add. So this is what's happening, right? More games, more networks more stadiums do you know what the next thing is they're going to add more teams and i could see them adding one more team for the afc or in the uk oh man the UK. See, that's where it gets difficult because the currency and the and all that stuff but like there's a huge section of the united states that just doesn't have an nfl team right. so it's like yeah i, I say look right i mean there's plenty of, there's plenty of cities out there that that at this point would bid out of their out of the you know what's if they have a chance to get an NFL team, if they mm -hmm. go international before they go another two teams in the United States, I think that would make a lot of people a little sour. Yeah. I, I I just do. Well, that's I mean, happening anyways. Right. Oh no, yeah. I know. Fans can complain about that. They don't right. care because the money over there is like an untapped. It's like oh, jet clamp it striking oil. It's like right. oh well, now <laughs> I got it. That, that's exactly what it is. If it was in the U.S., the two, it's always St. Louis tried again right. because it's such San a Diego. rabid fan base there. San Diego. San Diego's tough in that state to get a new stadium though because there's so much red tape right san antonio is the one i was gonna say san antonio, Grandpa right. jerry don't want no third team in texas you're lucky i let a houston back in you think i'm letting the third team back in my state he would stop that so he'd have to die first essentially sorry to be gruesome but he'd have to die because no one for his dead body are they putting a third team in texas that's only gonna hurt him what about portland would portland Portland's get a team a, at this that's point? an interesting yeah. one what about yeah. mexico city Right. Mexico, that, I mean, yeah. That's Toronto. another one I thought about too. Yeah, Toronto too. Mexico because... City, Toronto. Yeah. yeah That'd remember... be easier than UK and Germany. Exactly. I mean, God, exactly. anything would be better than that. To have to travel overseas like that just for a <laughs> you yeah, bring and... your own water to Mexico. Oh my God. <laughs> right. Right. Good point too. <laughs> travel right. with your own water. <laughs> You're gonna have Montezuma's revenge. Aqua, Aqua, you know, Aqua, that's, that's the football that's team. That's a play call. That's a play call. <laughs> that's, Imagine being in Mexico City and saying Mex we're running Montezuma's revenge. Right. They, jo they join the NFC South. That's right. Monte Mexico's Montezuma's revenge. That's <laughs> a great. A what's the mascot? What's the mascot? <laughs> a, toilet. a toilet? <laughs> a toilet or a or a bottle of water? Like the bottle Hell of water. Every time you have the drink, right? Oh, oh my god. god. Oh god. Well, now that we're all uh, laughing our butts off at this point, let's get to the last uh, topic here on the roundtable because this was a topic of conversation. Obviously, I'm here at the Players' Lounge Barbershop. We were talking about this earlier today as well. The Tom Brady roast. I know it's not football-centric, and we talk football-centric here on the, on the roundtable. Um, my question is, how much money did he get for doing this? Because I've seen roasts before, and I get I, I get what a roast is. You're going to get crushed up there. If you were the roaster E, and the roasters are up there, you're getting demolished. That's how it is. He got as bad of roasting job as I have ever seen on any one of these roasts, going back to like the Dom Rickles roast that used mm -hmm. to go on years and years ago. I've never seen anything like this. Uh, I haven't started with Mike yet on any of these topics, and I've been waiting to start with Mike for this one because I know he's got something up his sleeve for this. The Tom Brady no. roast, I watched yeah. all three hours and then ended up going back and watching certain parts over again because I still couldn't believe what I heard at that point. What did you think, Mike? I'll start with you here. The Tom Brady roast uh in general for tom and everyone else up there yeah i love a good roast and there's no humor that's too dark for me <laughs> so i don't know what that says about me but overall here's the deal tom brady knew what he was signing up for right. and you said tom brady got roasted so bad did he or did his ex-wife get roasted really okay. bad right because here's point. the good thing point. right tom right. brady he's got millions upon millions looked at as the greatest football player who's ever lived what can you say about him that's gonna upset him 
I have never been divorced in my life, but I've heard from people. It's hell. It's the single worst thing any human being can go through. Right. And I'm sure over the past, how, what, like year and a half or so, whatever it's been, he's mm -hmm. wanted to say a million things, but has bit his tongue for the sake of his children and all that stuff. And this was a chance for him to send a message to his ex-wife and say everything he's probably wanted to say without having to open his lips right. once and let Ooh. everyone else say it for him. You know, he took eight, <laughs> she took eight jujitsu classes a day. She stole white belt. The only bruises she had was on her butt. I mean, uh, I, I won't say it vulgarly, but all those jokes that I'm sure he wanted to say some version of something to say, screw you, Giselle. He just let a list of people, a line of people uh, for three hours say every dang thing to his ex-wife that he was probably dying to say. He wanted to make fun of him and Gronk and a pretty boy with a face and he might be getting what? Go for it. He didn't care about that. That right. ain't going to affect his life. He was probably laughing inside, one, all the way to the bank, and two, that all this stuff, I didn't have to get it off my chest. They did it for me. And that's, you know what? If that's what, and I know, look, is it right for her? She didn't sign up for it and she got attacked viciously viciously right but i don't know it was that's so funny time. that's a conversation they can have right it was so damn funny I, in all honesty it i have was. to go i want to go back in my comment because i said tom brady got roasted the most gronk got roasted the oh most by he everybody don't care, though, either no but no he doesn't he did, right right dougley i'll go to you here on this oh it was so good it was so <laughs> good and you brought up gronk and kevin hart Oh. And he went up after uh, what's her face Glazer. Right, he's Glazer. Yeah. like, oh, I did, I do get paid. Like he was like, you're so dumb. <laughs> even, <laughs> even me know that coin isn't real. Right, getting like... into the joke, but it was, it, yeah. And you know, the Comedy Central roast the uncensored one. Some of them are bad. Right. That one though, bad. Oh my god, because it was live. The right. No editing. Yeah, right. and right. Tom Brady had to get up at one point and tell him like. Oh, Relax. That was Jeff Ross. That was, yeah. He got up and told he, Jeff Ross enough with the Robert Kraft. Say what you want about my right. ex-wife. Say mm -hmm. any vulgar thing you want about me. Right. Leave Robert Kraft alone. <laughs> he brought up massages and it was over. Right. The right. awkwardness between Kraft and Belichick and oh. stuff. It was. It was good. It was really good. Oh. I enjoyed it. You got to watch it. If you haven't seen it yet and you're watching us right now, please. I know it's three hours. Here's long. the other one too. Oh. Real quick, Pierre. Real quick. When. He finally went up at the end and he said the line about Kim Kardashian and her kid's father, which, you know, everyone jumped all over the, oh my God, I can't believe he said it. You know, there was a rumor for a short time that Kim, who was with OBJ for like a year or so, but now mm -hmm. she's not, that she was with Tom Brady for a short time. I'm thinking he might have said that because I wouldn't be shocked if they were together, even though it was never confirmed. And there probably was a run in with the father. And now he's like, okay, this is my chance to give a jab back at him too on national right. television. But to me, that kind of confirmed all that. I mean, I know I'm reading into this, but I think it's Tom okay. got a lot off his chest with really having to say very little. Right. Sarney. I love roast. Uh, even back to you know the Friars Club roast on Comedy Central, even the right. D Martin, Frank Sinatra Martin, roast. These yeah. were some of the stars, young comedian superstars can be found with one joke. I'll give you an example. Uh, Susie Essman, Susie Essman of Curb Your Enthusiasm, Susie Green, was on a roast as a New York comedian. No one knew her. And she roasted one of the greatest legends of comedy, Alan King. And she said one of the greatest lines ever. And this is, if you don't know Alan King, he was in Casino. He was one of the older guys at Casino that got black. He was a huge Jewish comedian. Everyone knows him, loves him, whatever. So Susie, a no-name, just looks at him and says, the only thing more inflated than your ego is your prostate. And everyone <laughs> lost it. And lo and behold, she became huge. My right. winner for the Susie Essman Award was Tony Hitchcliffe. Yeah, this he was good. Delivered yeah. one of the greatest right. lined and written jokes. You know he was rehearsing this for like a year right. with the king. And it was so good that you had roasters, his peers, slapping him and kicking him. It was so good. That, those are the things that I love. There was nobody there. No. Nobody was bad. They didn't right. have the situation come up as a oh like, right. Right. you they brought in their A game roasters and they went A plus plus. And to me, the best roaster in the world right now, not named Jeff Ross, is Nikki Glazer. Yes, yeah, she, she was awesome. She was She's, so her good. Cadence, right. The way that she does it, and if you want to poke the bear and step into her then, you are cooked. Gronk did good. Gronk was pretty good. Yeah, so, no, yeah. so did Bledsoe. Oh, <laughs> oh, Bledsoe oh, showed zero personality underrated. for his right. entire playing career. Right. Stands up there, licks his lip a thousand times, but he did good. Bledsoe <laughs> was the self-deprecating award winner of the right. Day. 
if you, you got to go back and watch the Drew Bledsoe clip because he brings up a full glass of booze or whatever he was drinking. <laughs> and with and like after every line, he took a sip because you could tell he's got like you could tell he's getting nervous. He's up there getting nervous. He drank that entire cup in like two sips. And every time he told like something funny and you could tell he was nervous, he reached down for his cup again and realized there was nothing in it. I had to go back. I got to look for that now. To me, I'm telling you, to me, that was really funny because I've seen, if you watch comedians, they always go up with a big glass of something, water or booze on stage. And there's always, until the set's over, there's always something in there. He drank his entire glass because he got so nervous at first. Drew Blood, so underrated, was amazing at this at, at all. And by the way, not to pat my own back or whatever, but shout out to my eighth grade prom date who's in middle school. That's right. Who sat behind Dana White and was in oh every God. single B-roll. Corinne, who was on Survivor, who was on the Survivor show oh, years I ago. Remember her, yeah. She was my eighth grade prom date okay. in middle school. She texted me right before the roast and she goes, I have really good seats. Tell me if you see me. Within one second of them showing Dana White, Corinne is in the entire thing. She's in every single B-roll. She had great seats. I don't know what she had to do to get those seats, but God bless her. She had some good ones. But I agree with, I think it was Sarni who said, Kill Tony was the best. Mm -hmm. So good. Nikki Glaser was the best until Kill Tony got on stage. And Kill Tony's podcasts were so funny. They're hysterical in general, but he it's went the up best. there and delivered one after the other after the other and ripped everyone on the stage. And it was it was really fun. It was a great three. Sometimes three hours of anything is too much outside of football. Not that. Not that. I could if they said there was an hour left after that, I probably would have watched till one a.m. until the whole thing was done. That's Here's a couple things, real quick. Yep. The day after the roast, literally the day after, Nikki Glazer went on Howard Stern and said the yep. joke she didn't tell. Those were oh my god, the one she did. I got to go back and were hear just that. as good as go the ahead. one she said. So that's number one. And number two, you know, everyone's saying, "Why would Tom Brady do it? Why would he do it?" I mm. think because you want to get back to the next wave, or he got paid a boatload. The only other person I could say is like, why would they subject themselves to this? I'm thinking back to the ones on Comedy Central, and I know it's kind of a thing for politics, so people in the comments are going to love me. When Ann Coulter went up there one year, oh it was on the dais. First <laughs> right. off, she bombed because she's not a comedian. But to oh put yourself God. on the dais, you're opening yourself up to just being destroyed. Ann Coulter went up there, and these comedians, their eyes Ruster. lit up. Right. Like, this is like comedy gold. Steve and these, Davidson was ready to roll We card. don't care who we're roasting. We're right. going after Ann, and they destroyed her. I think, <laughs> the one, I think one of the lines from that one with Ann Coulter is, if Ann Coulter's here, who's scary? Who's scary? Pete Davidson. Right. Pete Davidson. Right. That was the Pete Davidson I'm one. so happy you had that. Right. Was, right. If Ann Coulter's those... here, who's scaring all the girls? Those are fields. <laughs> got heckled. Like, Nikki Glaser, oh. as good as she is, Pete Davidson, as good as he is, they get heckled probably every single time right. they do a stand-up right. set. They got lists of companies Backs ready to go like audibles. It was hysterical. It was such up. good TV. It was such good TV to watch. And the fact that it was Tom Brady. Yeah. Uh, you know, that that's what made it 10 times better than all. And then you it, know what I you yeah. know what I loved? He crapped on the Bills, right? Oh, yeah. And, like, and the Jets. And, the, and Jets. the Jets, right? And he didn't talk about the Dolphins. There right? was a Dolphin <laughs> reference from Bill Belichick, if anyone caught it. And yeah. on Twitter, a Bills fan was like, "Dolphins are so irrelevant." He didn't even talk. Like you are, you can't be that stupid. Like you, <laughs> you can't, can't be that. I'm stupid. telling you, Chuck, they are. I live with these people. Like, he the, ripped yes, they into are. you guys, and he left the Dolphins alone because we were a thorn in his right. side. That's right. He had respect for us and JT. I love like, that. Thank Belichick, you, Tom. Right. Thank Bill you, Tom. Belichick right. made fun of the Dais in a shout out to the Dolphins by saying, "Is this is the comedy version?" version of the no name defense which is the 72 dolphins so we got it we did We're it in. What, a, what a fun night what a fun time that was uh just seeing tom brady up there and you're right mike you're 100 right if whatever he wanted to get off his chest for the last two years he didn't have to say it everyone else did i was cringing and my wife was in the room listening and she was just like oh my god i can't believe they would say that and i'm like it's only gonna get worse these guys haven't started drinking yet like and i, I mean think it from her perspective <laughs> from her perspective it's rough because she oh, didn't sign up for that. And, and she wasn't even there. So I get right. it. But that's a conversation she's got to have with Tom. Right. From Tom's perspective, he knew. Like, they don't just pick people and, like, not tell them what's going to happen. Like, he <laughs> right. spoke to Jeff Ross. He probably spoke to yeah. Kevin Hart. And they told him, look, we're going to go after you hard. We're going to go after this, this, and this. And he probably like, okay, it's fine. I mean, it's it's not real when you're hearing it. Then you're sitting there. It's a holy shit. Right. But he knew they were going to go after her. And he didn't care. Clearly, he didn't care. Because that, that was, was the theme of the night. I liked what Kevin Hart also said something like, "Somebody tell Robert Kraft where he is right now because yes, he might not know where he is." I got at one point Robert Kraft looked like he was spaced out and had no, either he was drunk or he was just 
getting older and had no idea where he, he was. He was like 85. Right. Yeah, that's, a problem. Like he, that's what it is. He just looked all over the place. Yet he ran up to the stage to take a shot with Belichick. He couldn't mm-hmm. wait to do that. Oh, that yeah, because was... his image has got to be fixed there, not really Bill's. Of course. Because right. he killed Bill. Yeah, no, oh, I mean, I know it's funny. Like, killed Bill. He right. killed Bill. <laughs> Bill had the Atlanta job. Belichick. Oh, up. yeah. Bill, Belichick got roasted a bunch also up there, even he by former care. players. No, not at all. But, like, the whole looking for a job or this and that, like – that was that was pretty interesting to see him take that also on the chin. That was fun. he showed up with a whistle and the flag. He's like carrot top. He's got props. <laughs> I'm telling I was, you, I, I was this saying this when uh, I saw Bill Belichick uh, draft night with Pat McAfee. Yeah, he was now that too. he's not a patriot, I right. love him. Right, like, right. When you talk about trying to get Randy Moss and Randy Moss hung up on him and stuff. Right. Like when these players leave the Patriots, they're great. It's just when you're with the Patriots, it's just I hate you're handcuffed. It. I can't right. Only one great. person wasn't that way, Ryan Flores. <laughs> <laughs> and on that note, we're ending the roundtable. Well done, Mike, with the line of the day. This is fun, guys. This is great. We didn't have to go through X's and O's. And that we could have done the entire pod on the roast. Like, I could have talked about the roast yeah. the entire time. It was just so much fun to watch at that point as well. All right, that's going to do it for us this week. Thank you, as always, for watching and supporting the roundtable as I'm here live at the Players' Lounge Barbershop. Once or twice a week here. Once my guys all come into town, you're going to come here. I'm going to get you a real haircut. You're going to feel nice. nice. I need we, one. You're, you listen, Dougley, you could sit right in the chair here with my boy, Steve. <laughs> I, I didn't want to say it last time. I think we were on the air or we did it here. But sitting right there before he signed his contract was Robert Hunt before he signed nice. for $100 million. And then after when he did sign for $100 million, I asked him if I could borrow But we $5. left a good tip. Right. I'm <laughs> sure he did. Tip. And I also asked him if I could borrow 5 bucks. Okay, I did that also. You're right. <laughs> That was for me. All right. That's going to do it for us this week. We'll talk to you again next week for Doug Lee, for Mike, for Jason. Actually, let's do this first. Doug Lee, where's everyone going to find your stuff? Let them know. YouTube.com slash Doug Lee Do Wrong. And like I said before, you can also find me on uh, the Dolphins Talk podcast. Me and Steven started one. He finally, I'm a late owl, and he's like, I want to do a podcast with you. I'm like, I'm only available at a certain time. We record it Thursday nights at midnight, and it wow. comes up Friday. So. He wanted yeah. to do it. I said, sure. He's now mandated to do it. He, he can't get out. You're not mandated. Yep. And now He's I'm in. back with the family. So here we I go. Like go. Well there done. Go. Good promotion send you a, by you. A mug and a pen. Right. I was about <laughs> to say, where, where is Douglas mug already at this point? I still got one. I still got one more mug I can send out and a couple more pens. I'll get your address, Doug. There you go. Mike, where's everyone finding the stuff for the website? Oh, go to the website, dolphinstalk.com, on Twitter at dolphinstalk, and see Dougley do wrong on the dolphinstalk.com YouTube channel. <laughs> this is going to turn into the Dougley podcast. I love it. Uh, Sarni, <laughs> you're up. What do you, where's everyone finding your stuff? Dolphins talk. <laughs> Dolphins wire. All dolphins. Antics on Twitter. Boynton Beach, Philadelphia, New York. I'll dom anywhere, wherever. I love it. I love it. That'll do it for us this week. Uh, thanks again, always, for uh, watching and listening to Grant's Corner. Me and these three dudes, we have a good time every single week. Uh, whether and it's fun- May. It's and only it's- May. Right. I was going to say. Well, we're going to get better. Right. We, we, I think we have rookie mini camp coming up in a couple days. I'm sure we'll talk about that next week, but we'll find some other uh, crazy, funny stuff to talk about. You should do a it's- Dolphins roast with everybody. Wow. Oh, we still haven't fired somebody yet either. <laughs> Second Who week in row, who's, right. who's roastable? That's the question. Who's the roastable person? That's a radio tease. You'll find out <laughs> next week who's roastable right here on Krantz's Squatter Roundtable. For the guys, I'm Zach Kranz. Thank you as always for watching and listening, subscribing, doing that whole thing for us. And we'll talk to you again next week here on Krantz's Corner, the Dolphins Roundtable. <laughs>